Thank you, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for, for being here today. Um, so before starting, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to talk a little bit about my research. So I'm currently a first year postdoc at the University of Southampton, and I'll be talking a little bit about my account results of my of my research, uh, which was done in collaboration with um, Adam Pound and Samuel Lofton. So uh, my current research lies in the Salesforce program. So the Salesforce is currently the leading method to model EMRIs, uh, which stands for extreme mass ratios and spirals. And it relies um, on an expansion in powers of the mass ratio of the binary system. Now this expansion transforms the field equation into a se series of linear PDEs uh, that are to solve for the metric perturbations, H1, H2, and so on. Now, perhaps the central difficulty in solving this equation is that the smaller mass uh, compact object is modeled as a point particle. And so the energy momentum tensor um, contains Dirac delta functions. Now, one of the leading methods to deal with this is through what's called the effective source approach, where the full retarded field is split into two pieces, uh, the singular and the, and the regular pieces. Now, the, the singular piece contains all of the local multipole structure of the point particle and is effectively a um, particular solution to the field equation, while the regular piece is a homogeneous solution and is therefore smooth. Now this um, split between um, inhomogeneous and homogeneous solution um, is not um, unique, but it can be chosen in such a way that the self force that represents the deviation from geodesic motion uh, from a from, uh, from a curve record, uh, depends only on the regular piece and so does not depend on, on the singular piece. And so it's quite important to find an efficient method to compute the singular part at a high order. Uh, now the current method um, to do this um, involves many subtle steps uh, to, to obtain a covariant expression. So these are sort of the very you know rough steps to, to do them. So you effectively, you effectively um, express your singular piece as an integral over some green function. The green function has to be then rewritten in Hadamard form, which is expressed in terms of certain bitensors. These have to then be expanded in terms of another bitensor, which is called the Singer's world function, which itself has to be expanded again about the particle. And so, you know, after all is said and done, uh, after all is said and done. Um, the expressions that you get become very, very lengthy, very, very quickly. And so as a result, only a few orders uh, can be computed in practice. And furthermore, it's very difficult uh, to automate these calculation um, in typical algebra softwares like Mathematica. And so I'm currently proposing a new method to compute the singular field, uh, which is both simpler and generates the singular field at, at a very high order. And so the main idea of um, of this new method is to use a specific co-moving uh, coordinates where the metric is flat at the particle. And then you expand uh, your field in spherical harmonics and it powers the distance of the particle and you solve your field equations order by order. Now it turns out um, that, so for example, I implement this idea uh, for the scalar field in circular geodesic cloud and Schwarzschild. And it turns out that doing it like that, you can compute the modes of your scalar field order by order at all orders analytically. And so in particular, I successfully computed the puncture field to 16th total order, which is many orders higher than what the current method can achieve in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, and these results have been checked to agree then with the um, known covariant expression to fourth total order. And so here I'm showing you a plot of the runtime um, in Mathematica to compute the modes of the puncture uh, at different orders, as well as the time it takes for Mathematica to simplify these expressions. And so as you can see, even for a puncture for half um, half order, half total orders, a half dozen total orders, sorry, uh, my current algorithm um, typically needs in the order of minutes to compute the puncture field. Furthermore, it also turns out that in those coordinates, the overall size of the modes of the puncture field also increases only linearly with the order, which means in particular that even at a very high order, um, evaluating them at specific parameter values is very quick and affordable. Now, all of this was in a particle 
frames and the particle coordinates. And so you, you might ask what, what happens in the black hole frame? Can you do the transition? Now it turns out that for the M modes um, of the black hole, the M modes of the black hole frame can be computed analytically at all orders from the LM modes in the, um, in the particle frame. And so in particular, you know, I'm showing you some plots of the of the m equal to zero mode of the effective source at uh, different orders in the puncture. And so in particular here, I'm showing it to you uh, for the by taking a into account the first three orders of the puncture. So with the with those three orders of the puncture, the, the effective source is continuous, even if it's not differentiable at the particle. And then when you then crank up the algebra and you take into account higher and higher, higher and higher order in your puncture, the effective source improves in differentiability. So once you take into account the first four orders, it's then continuous and differentiable. And once differentiable, then at the next, it's then twice differentiable. And then it goes on like that. And for this presentation, I have it all the way to, to seventh total order, at which point the effective source is uh, very smooth, as you can see. So for future outlook, so I presented to you a simple method to compute the puncture scheme at a very high order. And there are different directions that I'm currently exploring to, ex to extend this method. Notably, I'm ex extending it to the gravitational case, as well as, of course, extending it to the Kerr and eccentric orbits. Also, I've shown a way to compute the modes of the puncture at a very high order, um, which suggests to explore the idea or re-explore the idea to um, to do cell force via only an M mode decomposition. So thank you, thank you all for for listening. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, drop me an email, and I wish you all a pleasant day.